IH Gadget UK here we go. Apologies for the rain. Um, seen better days. Look at the state of that. Um, Commodore um, data set. C2N cassette. Um, yeah, I just need to uh, give this a good clean, strip it down. Um, hopefully all these marks and things, are, most of them will probably come out. Um, it needs a new door, that door's been split. You can see, I don't know if it opens yet, well. Uh, so we'll try to tape that, haven't we? I might just super glue that together, I don't know. Um, thing is, I'm going to take that door off because I'm going to use um, one of those um, Audio 2 cassette adapters where you stick it, it's like a cassette thing stuck in, it's got its own head. Um, and it uh, should transfer the sound there so I can uh, load the tapes from MP3. So, uh, yeah, get me to get in there first. Let's have a look. There's uh, four screws on the back, I think. So, there you go. Once you've got those four screws out, there's not much going on in there. Um, it's really well, there's a bit of dirt and stuff inside. It's not that dirty. But I'll clean it up with some cotton buds and things, ice pop, um, and give it inside the case a wipe around. I might take that belt off. It's pretty loose, actually, that. Um, Counter that though, I guess there's another one probably somewhere underneath the actual that goes from this motor um, here to the main assembly. So, uh, might need to do something like that, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, if what I'm doing with this, like I say, I'm gonna have a tape head that's gonna you know transfer this, transmit the signal to the tape head that's there anyway. Um, so, it doesn't even matter if this rotates um, until this works. So, interesting, give it a try, but. Uh, Pretty dirty, you can tell the dirt on the buttons and things there. I'll wipe the tape heads down with some isoprop as well. Um, not going to use the tape demagnetizer just yet because I don't think it needs it. Alright, let's get the uh, cleaning stuff. So, all I'm going to do with this get some isoprop on a cotton bud and then just go over any of these areas like this where you've got uh, dirt and stuff. I'll leave the heads till, till the last time. That's pretty much all it needs, really. So then, for the heads, um, isoprop on a cotton swab, um, and you just want to do the, the face of the head there. Let's see if we can get this on camera so it's uh, a bit more visible. You just want to just wipe over that with some isoprop. Don't be worried about putting a little bit of pressure on because you get stuff stuck on there. Lint free is the best thing to use, but it's not so bad with the cotton buds I'm using at the moment. Go pretty clean. I'm going to do the same thing with the, I think that's an erase head or something, is it? See, actually, the surface of that's pretty dirty. You can see brown sort of coming off on that there, but it's corrosion or what. Yeah, that was really dirty. Um, give those tape guides a clean as well. Um, that tape guide. Finally, don't forget your rollers. Um, I do the same thing with those, just ice pop. Uh, you might need to rotate these round as you clean each part. See, the stuff comes off. Dirt and what have you. It's pretty clean. And don't forget your spindle as well, because some of these are going to be pretty dirty. 
There's a bit of uh, sort of crustiness around there, so we'll give those a clean. As well, you can see, pretty dirty. Should you be able to free rotate these if you do them the right way. some of that belt now. Uh, just rotate it. Okay, we can, we can do that. Yeah, we can. Yeah, this whole thing actually comes in. There you go, you can get to the belts underneath. So I'll give that clip that belt clean as well. But I'm going to clean this out on here. So you could wash this in the same can, just going to spray some washing liquid in the water in there. Just give it a bit of a white really. It's not that important, it's just to get the bits of dirt and stuff out so you don't go back into the unit really, into the mechanism, into the heads and things. with a cotton bud. Let's go around the edges here with some uh, soap just to get the crust off. Now there's little gaps there because they are a bit crusty. It's just where you've got that lip, you know, it collects dirt over the years. That's it, in this corner here, it's a bit dirty. So once you've washed off the majority of the dirt that way, what you can do then is just use a bit of isoprop to get rid of any of these uh, marks like that and that should hopefully clean up a bit. There you go, so that's gone. Almost gone. Look, uh, see what else we've got a couple here. And, uh, that hopefully should come off. Yeah, they're a lot better. They're not some of these are but not coming out completely, but they're considerably better than they were. on there. It's not so bad now. Pretty clean on the inside, pretty clean on the outside as well. So as I mentioned if your belts um, are slipping what you can do is you can take these belts off um, and sort of put them in a pan of boiling water for like five minutes or something um, and that can make them um, Bring them back, you know, back to life, give them a bit of strength back. Same time as cleaning them. But I just tend to just, you know, if there's nothing wrong with them, just tend to just leave them in place and just give them a clean. So I prop. Whilst you're under here, obviously you can get any bits of dirt and stuff off as well. Um, but it is pretty clean under there actually. Okay, so we we'll just do the same thing now on the. Uh, Top part of this. It's 
like I say, you could do this in the sink if it's, you know, it would make it easier for, you know, a brush, you know, use a scrubbing brush on it, hot soap and water. But uh, right now, this is the way I want to do this, we can bump taking it into the sink. Hopefully, some of these marks again should come off with uh, the isopop. Um, and it should look pretty good when it's finished. Isn't it? Really dirty. Don't know what's been happening with this. Just years of storage, I guess, and use. I don't understand why people don't clean these things. I really don't. Why would anyone be happy to have that in the crusty condition it was in when you use it you know, on a regular basis? As it was being used, it's just, I don't know, beyond me. Yes, as I should before, crimp, just crimp these right down, just so it makes it easier to get into the little nooks and crannies. So, just as I did before, I'm going to use some isopop now to uh, clean up these marks. So, I'm just trying to start, start with these ones near the tape uh, counter. See if those come off, should do. It's usually where dark coloured plastic or rubber, PVC, etc, you know, from the cable has uh, made contact with it. You know, you've got it's like a friction um, mark, if you like. But they usually come out quite nicely with a bit of ice prop, as you can see, that's pretty much gone. It's just there a little bit. Same should happen with half of these ones. Though. And you can always use some PVC cleaner afterwards and it should make a bit more difference. Okay, yeah, same bit of force and the gum. It's amazing how you can get these marks out with a bit of ice prop and a bit of pressure. It really is. Aside from the door missing, it should be pretty good this one. Finished it. So I can always get a spare door. I mean, these ones are a bit more stubborn, I think I need to get the plastic PVC clean onto these ones. So, I don't know if you can see that. What was a uh, pretty bad mark there, it's pretty much gone. So, it's interesting you've got to do this two approach, you know, the ice pop doesn't get everything off. This is slightly more abrasive, but it's designed for plastics. And in case you're wondering, it's the same stuff I always use it's the glass plastics. Sorry about the rain, it's uh, extremely. So hopefully you can see there now that pretty much most of the marks are off. I might just give it another go at that little one there, but um, there were a lot of marks all the way around it and they're all gone. So yeah, pretty pleased with that. I start to reassemble it. So the other thing I've just done here is I've taken the screw out the end of here because it was rust, there was loads of rust on the end, I cleaned the end of that head up and put the grommet back inside there because it sort of pulled out. So I'll just reassemble this now. I'll stick a bit of WD-40 in that screw head first and I'll just scrunch it to a bit of the rag, you know, and stick it back together. Don't forget to clean your cables as well. Look at the state of the dirt that's come off that just from that little bit there. 
there you go, there's a final result. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.